using mahogany for uh, this belt piece here. Now, as I'm planning out on painting this, I'm going to paint from the bottom layers first, mask that, paint the next layers, mask that, paint the next layers. So here, there are three layers here. There's the belt, that's the first layer. The second layer would be the trousers themselves. And the third layer would be this uh, suspender belt. And these are all three different colors. So I'm going to paint this uh, belt first. So I'm going to do a nice light misting layer first. And I'm not going to worry about overspraying too much. I'm just going to make sure I coat everything here. And there now she has a painted belt. Now this also has, you know, three layers. This actually, technically this has four layers because the buckle will be a different color as well. So one, two, that would be the same layer as this. I'm going to paint this a different color than the buckle. So one, two, three, four as my layers. So these parts have had um, overnight to dry. I could mask off the belt now. And what I'm going to do is um, start off using to my masking tape. This is a low tack, meaning that you know not ultra sticky so it won't peel the paint off. And I'm just gonna trim a little bit from here. I like to use a bamboo bamboo skewer. This is my multi-tool to apply masking tape. Just wrap it around belt piece right here. I also use parafilm, which is a little stretchy plastic thingy. It's kind of similar to saran wrap. Got a little waxiness to it. All I have to do now is pull on it. It adheres. It attach. Oh, it sticks very well to itself. It doesn't stick well to anything else, but it sticks well to itself. So it makes for a nice masking tool. And this end of the belt is masked off. And there, this piece is masked off, and I'm ready to paint the second level. So now that I have this part masked off, I can paint the buckle. I'm going to start with uh, the gloss black and I'm just, just going to spray the buckle area. And once this dries, I can go on and paint the metallic. So next up, I have some polished brass from Alclad that I'm going to use to paint. The pressure is fairly low, you can probably hear that. And you can see that the surface of this uh, buckle is very very high gloss and it's completely dry it's been dry for a few hours now and that gloss finish will translate very well over to to the brass and there we have her brass buckle done I'm gonna mask this belt first. I'm gonna, it's a pretty easy mask job. I'll just take some parafilm, cut a quick sheet of this stuff out, and go ahead and mask over this. Since the area around the buckle has already been masked off, this is a very quick mask job. Now next up, since I have the, her belt masked off, I'm going to paint the trousers or chaps. So I'm using khaki as my base color.
my shading color on lighter tone, I'm gonna use a uh, Mr. Color Middle Stone. Gonna hit the lighter areas. What I want to do for this piece is I'm actually gonna do a heavier shade effect. Uh, looking for more, a little bit more contrast. You can see the difference here. I'm going to do a small amount of blending. And that's about it. Now you can compare the two pieces to see how the undertone works well with the shaded effect. I'm gonna start off with painting her hammer piece. And I wanna paint this in a metallic, so I'm gonna start off with a gloss black base. Now the black base I use is a brand called Finishers. Um, this is a lacquer base paint from Japan, come in bottles like this. Uh, I really like this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this piece. And just like before, I'm going to paint a light, a light misting layer. And the black on top of the gray primer, it's easier to see this black, um, or it's easier to see this uh, misted layer. So you see, I'm gonna mist it all around. Once I have this this uh, misted layer down, I can go closer and I can spray a lot. And you notice that it's got that wet look to it. Since this is a glossy paint, this will dry with that glossiness to it. This is one of those techniques for painting gloss, is to get that wet finish on it, so that when it dries, it dries that very, very high shine. I'm going really close and spraying a lot of paint and moving the part around quite a bit to get this glossy finish to it and again how smooth your primer layer is on this uh, on these parts uh, will reflect on how glossy you can get these parts so my hammer pieces have dried overnight and what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna spray on um, stainless steel this is a product called Alclad and it's pretty thin ready for the airbrush I'm using stainless steel for this and dropping my airbrush press pressure down to about 10 to 12 psi. Spray my light misting layer. These parts that have dried for at least a day and a half, or actually a day. So um, I could go ahead and mask this. Outclad is kind of touchy, you really need to let it uh, cure up. Now, the difference between dry and cure, curing, it could be dry to a touch uh, within an hour or so, but the paint hasn't cured, which means the paint hasn't sat and chemically bonded with the 
with the surface. So that's what curing means, is you need to actually let it cure so that it's actually on there pretty good as opposed to just being dry. Uh, this reduces the possibility of paint lifting when you mask. Now for this, <clears throat> I want to do a candy, basically a, a, a bright silver or chrome, and then paint red over this so I have this uh, very, very metallic red. So I'm going to, I paint this part first and I'm going to just mask over this. So I'm going to start with my parafilm, and hopefully this will work. Otherwise, I'm going to have to use I'm going to have to use a masking tape here. So I'm going to get a running start on this first to get kind of the entire thing masked on itself, and then go along the edge. So the parafilm will stretch and kind of mask inside this edge so this makes for a very very easy mask job <clears throat> if I miss the spot I could add a little bit more parafilm to it because it again sticks very nicely to itself I'm gonna start over here and again just mask around to where that edge is I want to paint these um, this top area here a candy red. I'm going to start off with a uh, silver candy base. This part looks kind of dull when I finish spraying it, but once it has time to dry, which is about half an hour, this will really shine up a little brighter. This, this one has had time to dry, so you notice that it's a little bit shinier, it's not as dull, so it does get that shine as it uh, dries. I'm using the Candy Ruby Red Enamel by Outclad. Now this is why I do recommend in lieu of using the Hot Metal Red. This stuff is a little bit thicker, so it coats a lot better. So you're not using a ton of this stuff uh, to get some color on the paint parts. Now for this, you need to use very, very light coats and slowly build this up. Clear colors are a little bit more difficult to paint with because it's hard to see when the color starts coming on there and it's hard to tell when to stop painting. So I'm going to do a light misting coat. You can start to see that it's starting to get a little pink. Spray a little bit of paint and then spray some air to kind of air dry this and proceed. Now what I can do also is stop spraying this part after I get a nice little coat on there and work on the next part. So this gives time for the other part to dry a little bit while I work on this. And then I'll swap back to the other part and keep swapping back and forth until I get the desired tone. Clear colors is difficult to paint because um, it's hard to stop in the middle of, of the painting process when you know that the color's not completely on there to let it dry. At least I know that I have that difficulty to put a part down when I know that oh I haven't gotten the right tone that I want. And if you do try that technique where you spray wet, um, Again, candy col clear colors and candy colors are diff are very, very different to work with in that they don't play the same way. You really ought to just let it sit and uh, dry for a few minutes while you work on you know, other pieces to slowly build up that, um, that candy layer. Take your time and this will come out fantastically. Rush and you'll end up just going back and stripping this and reworking this.
I'm doing this to check the tones. This is definitely a little darker than this, so maybe a few more coats on this and I'll leave this alone. Getting an even tone on a singular part is also difficult too, especially with clear colors. If you spray in one section too long, that becomes a darker tone than the rest of the part. And it will be difficult to match that on the other areas. So it's definitely a good idea to build up the layers very, very slowly. Next up, I have this piece that I'm going to paint with the uh, hot metal red. This is meant for tinting. It's not meant as a main color because it's, to do a main color, it will take a lot, a lot of coats. I used several bottles of this on a Sazabi 144. So I'm going to show. I got some questions about the reason why. Uh, how, how did I? How many layers of this I painted? I can't even count the number of layers I painted for this stuff. And I'm going to spray a light coat. And you see that it gets a little pink. And slowly starts to build up. Again, to use this as an actual color you're going to spray, you're going to have to use a lot of this paint. And it's really meant just to tint things. So for a part this small, it's I believe it's okay to use. But if we're doing an entire kit, that's an entirely different story. So what I'm doing is I'm spraying paint for a little bit and then I'm, I'm mostly spraying a lot of air on it to, to dry it as I go along. So effectively, I don't really know how many coats I'm spraying on this thing. I'm just going along and doing this in one shot. Effective, realistically, what I should do is spray on a coat and let it sit there and dry. But since I'm spraying a lot of air on this, I could sort of get away from that and slowly build up the layers at one time by just air drying some of the paint as I go along. Now the danger here is I may spray too much or it might get to that one threshold where it gets a little too, uh, too saturated and the paint will start pooling. So this is where I'm you know, being very careful about painting this. Now imagine doing this for an entire kit. That's going to be a lot of this paint. And I've already sprayed quite a bit of this paint out just to color this this deep red but it is a very pretty color and then we have that so this next color is a purple that I mixed for uh, a Zegok kit I built and since I already have this, I'm going to use this for her little bandage area. This is a pre-shading tone. Uh, the way I shade is I use a darker tone and then a lighter tone on top. Uh, I'm going to use a white. So effectively, the white will inherit some of this um, kind of a lavender look to it. And uh, it will give you that lavender little... I'm going to shade uh, the leg parts using Finisher's Pure White. Just like shading earlier, I'm just going to hit the middle areas. Focus mostly on some of the raised areas.
once I have this more or less shaded, I'm going to go pull back a distance and spray a little heavier and blend everything together like so. And there I have a nice subtle shading effect 